play another piece of the interview I had with Kevin Miller. I asked him the question, have any, and, and I use the term mainstream followers, and, and he makes a comment about the word mainstream, but have many, any of the mainstream followers of Christ been upset with your approach, Kevin, in opening up this dialogue about hell? Here's what he had to say. Well, I think the first thing we need to do is to find the term mainstream, because what might be mainstream to you won't be mainstream to uh, our Eastern Orthodox Archbishop who's in the film. So definitely I would say this, is that there are some people who have elected themselves the gatekeepers of Orthodoxy, and some of them have been upset with the film. Uh, most notably, we'll say uh, Mark Galley, one of the editors of Christianity Today, was, was quite critical of the film. But the interesting thing is that um, I've done uh, interviews with all kinds of people over the last several weeks, um, some Christian, some Muslim, some atheist, and, and I have to say that by and large, the reception to the film has been, has been quite positive. Um, but I, ha I can also say that it's understandable that some people would be upset um, if you believe in eternal damnation in hell, and somebody like me, a Christian, comes along and starts to ask questions about that. Um, it's natural, I think, to be upset, because you will believe that people's eternal lives are at stake. And so, as Mike Bickle says in our film, universalism, he believes, is the worst heresy in the world, because if there is a hell and you people tell people it's not, well, what could be a worse crime you could commit than that? And I, I also think another fear people have is that, that if you pull at the thread of hell, everything else is going to go with it. And so it's natural and expected for people to push back. But I also think that the reaction reveals a lot about the role that hell actually plays in people's theology. Because one of the reactions I'll get is, well, if there's no eternal hell to be saved from, why be a Christian? Why did Jesus die on the cross? Why um, be good? And why tell people about the gospel? And to me, I think that that reveals that hell is actually the foundation of many people's faith, that really the only reason they can conceive of to be a Christian is to avoid going to hell after they die. And I kind of, in my more facetious moments, go, I really want to introduce you to someone named Jesus Christ, <laughs> because I think that, that if, if that's your only reason for being a Christian is to avoid hell, I wonder if you've really met him. Um, because I think what Jesus is calling us, is, is saving us from, isn't, isn't the wrath of God, He's coming to save us from ourselves. It's true grace. While we were yet enemies, Christ died for us, and we wanted it so bad. What do we do? We nailed him to a cross, and yet he comes back again. He will not give up on us. And I think that's really good news, because we live in a world that is, is, it is a death-driven world. It is a fear-driven world, and that, that makes us self-centered. It makes us self-destructive, and, and I just think that there are so many reasons why the world needs to be delivered here and now from the hells that we create on earth and that there is every reason in the world to go and share the good news of the gospel because unless people know about what jesus has set us free from they will continue to live under the shadow of death and anyone living under the shadow of death is living a fear-driven death-driven life that is miserable and and destructive to not only to themselves but to the to the people around them so I, I think what Christ is really calling us to is, is passionate engagement in other people's lives. And I think people think we need hell because we need some kind of a, an external system of rewards and punishments to keep us in line. But I, I would argue that that's exactly the type of thinking that Jesus came to save us from. That re religion is conformity to an external set of facts or an external set of rules. But what Jesus calls us to instead is an internal reorientation of our heart toward the will of God. And the will of God is for us to love Him, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to love our enemies, to be passionately engaged in people's lives. And I believe that um, this is why every commandment Jesus gave us, which is a handful, all include love. And, and what he's always trying to show us is the inter, interdependency that love creates, that your well-being is dependent on my well-being and vice versa. And in fact, God is, is, is saying that his, um, you know, his well-being is interdependent on us. He makes that really clear in Matthew 25, where he says, whatever you did to the least of these, you've done for me. So God cares passionately about us, and he has made room in the universe for us, and, and he wants us to do the same thing, it, that he wants us to be passionately engaged in other people's lives and to make room for him in our lives. 